Good evening to you, our dear viewers tuned into Smart 2040. We thank you for watching business today. I'm Rona Nahabwe. Now, World Health Day is observed every 7th of April in accordance with the World Health Organization aim to discuss world-related health-related issues across the world. Now, with me is Madame Jane Nalunga, who is the ED of Seattle, Uganda. Of course, their focus mainly is trade, and you might wonder where this connection with trade comes in, but that and more you're going to find out. Of course, a healthy nation creates a wealthy nation. So, Madam Jane Lunga, thank you for joining us and allowing to give us an input on today's business today. Thank you so much for having me on this World Health Day um, to have this conversation, and good evening, our viewers. Thank you. Now to set the momentum and maybe kick it off, what does such a day, you know, mean to Ugandans for a country that has survived, uh, not even survived because we lost quite a number of people in the pandemic, what should it mean for Ugandans as we even go ahead to celebrate it? Okay, uh, this day means a lot uh, to Ugandans and as you have said, we lost so many people during the COVID pandemic. We lost uh, so many other people under Ebola. And we have been losing people, you know, through malaria and other diseases. So this year's a theme is health for all. And it recognizes that health is a right. That everyone, whether you are poor, whether you are in the village, whether you are a woman, whether you are any sexual orientation, you are, you have a right to access health. So it's really, really an important, um, a very important theme of the word Health Day. Um, it, it, it also um, shows us that it's important to, to, to be healthy. Like you have said, a healthy nation is also a wealth nation. If people uh, seek all that time, they can't produce. So if people are healthy, they can be able to, uh, to, 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 to produce, we can be able to, uh, to, to develop our country, the economy will be able to run. And that's why we, Siatini, because we are interested in trade in the economy, we are also interested in a healthy population. And maybe another important issue is that um, one of the biggest, most important asset of a country are its people, its people. So if the people are not healthy, and the health is not just physical, the health is about well-being. People are healthy mentally, people are healthy, you know, socially, you know, people are healthy, they don't have any diseases that such a people can be able to develop a country. Now, as Yatin Uganda and advocates of tax justice, uh, having the people benefit from the budget and all, I would like to begin this from an internal perspective, the budget, and how much is allocated to health. We have seen the, the cut down of the primary health care, the surveillance, the adaptation, and all that. Do you think the government prioritizes, or does it prioritize health enough? Um, you know, uh, our leaders, way back, um, they met in Abuja and came up with Abuja declaration. And they agreed that they are going to spend 15% as a minimum on the health budget. Uganda hasn't yet reached that, that 15%. And I think the budget has been around 6%. 7%. So we are not yet there. And when I read um, some of the reports, um, I found out that almost 8% of our budget, of our health budget, is funded from outside. Then another statistics which um, took me um, by surprise is that the primary health budget is also reducing. I have the figures here that it declined from 42% of total health spending uh, in 2018 to 19 to 35% in 2020-2021. So, so maybe there is a way government is not prioritizing uh, health when, we, when you look at 
when you look at these figures. Because the primary health care is really important if we are going to, uh, to concentrate on the preventive instead of the curative. Uh, because uh, research shows that if, you cons if a government can concentrate at the lower level, the primary health care, the preventive, People know that they have to drink boiled water. People know they have to wash their hands. You know, people know that diet. Even the kids, the children can grow up bright. But there are also figures which show that most of our children are retarded because of the, the food they eat. So we need more resources at that, at that level. In fact, there is a, the village health teams should be one of those people who are also paid on government payroll, who can be able to advise you know, on those health issues. Now, I would like to uh, change maybe the topic to research and development in the health sector. A lot of money of, of which we get from funding is from donors, like you mentioned earlier. And I would like to know how can it be appropriated to the private sector to ensure that maybe perhaps this money reaches to the down healthy four centers. Give money to the private sector to ensure it goes down. No, no because um, for us who work in trade, what we have realized is that health has become a tradable commodity and very lucrative business. Whether you are talking about medicine, whether you are talking about the service, the health service, they are, um, uh, it's a very a lucrative business. But most often when things become privatized, it means those people who are poor, who don't have the money, can't be able to access, it, access those services. And this is what we realized during COVID. Lona, you remember, during COVID, people couldn't even afford to go to hospitals. The private hospitals went to the extent of even confiscating dead bodies. So we need to be able to see that government plays a key role when it comes to provision of health services. Like I said in the beginning, health care is a right. So government has to ensure that every Ugandan as a citizen accesses that. But going back to the issue of research and development, in a way I agree with you. Um, we need to be able, government need to be able to incentivize the private sector to be able to produce our own drugs. Uh, when you look at, again, statistics, we import almost 90% of our pharmaceutical products, including the raw materials and the active ingredients. When it comes to vaccines, I, I think we we'll almost import almost 99.1% of the vaccines. And you remember again, Ilona, during COVID, by the time Africa and Uganda, we received the vaccine doses, those developed countries had already got the first dose, the second one, the boosters and all that. That's when we got the vaccines. So we can't um, put our health in the hands of others. So we need, government needs to budget for research and development for us to be able to grow a pharmaceutical industry, for us to be able to grow, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to produce our pharmaceuticals, our medicines, our diagnostic um, equipment, be able to do the PPEs. Remember, even the PPEs were a problem during COVID, you know, we didn't have the gloves and all that. So, so we need to learn from, uh, we need to learn from the, the experience of COVID for government to be able to address those challenges. And the good thing also, uh, government has in place by Uganda, build Uganda. So if we, government puts in place, strengthens the pharmaceutical sector, we can be able to produce our, our, our medicines, our diagnostics, our PPEs. We can be able to produce our vaccines. And government can be able to buy them. Because one of the challenges for the private sector is also to get a market, you know? Because the private sector can produce 
those uh, medicines and government might not buy them. So government should work closely together with the private sector and be able to buy those drugs. But putting government in the spotlight and, and you know, putting a touch on them and telling them that this is what you're supposed to do, prioritize, give the health sector this much funding, do you think it has the capacity with the type of debt it has? Let's be realistic. Mm -hmm. The supplementary budget was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a report of the supplementary budget of 2.33 trillion. Mm -hmm. Among the projects that they were trying to, you know, move forward were the tier sugar factory, Monyonyo, I didn't see anything like health. If it was, it was really minimal. So, and the public debt itself, the debt that we have, yeah. and the budget, mm. how do you think it can be at play? We are, we, we are, the reason why I had suggested private sector mm. is because I feel like at a point the mm. government is marginalized. How best, what is the best approach for them yeah. to be at play? Okay. Uh, one, the private sector also, when you look at our private sector, it's also weak. You can't, uh, expect the private sector to put resources, a lot of resources in research and development in, in such a business. Government has to come in. In fact, when you look at other countries, other developed countries, they have been supporting their private sector. So government should do that. Where should government get the money? Government should prioritize. Are we take putting the money in a tiak or in a sugar cane, or are we putting it in the health sector? And when we are putting it in the health sector, government should also prioritize. Are we putting it in PPPs? PPPs are private public-private partnerships like Ruboa Hospital. Where should we put our money? Because for us as yet, in Ruboa money is wasted money, really. It is. Because look at how much money has gone there and what, what is there to show for it. And when you look at the challenges facing the health sector in this country, should we put that, our little resources, like you have said, Lona, we have no money, we are indebted, where should we put our money? What should we prioritize? Should it be Ruboa Hospital, really, or not? So, so the issue is pri uh, prioritization, but also government should develop our private sector. Another issue is to look at it from a regional perspective, because you see, um, it would really be, for example, very difficult uh, for Uganda to, to, to have, to produce vaccines. One, it's very expensive. You put in resources for research, but then also the market. The market has to be broad enough, you know. So, so it's important for government to look at it as a regional project. We are already in the East African community, and they also, when it comes to the pharmaceutical sector, we have, uh, I think we have an East African pharmaceutical platform. So our governments in the East African region should be able to come together, look at our pharmaceutical industry, support it, be able to produce our own medicines, our own vaccines. Now, Madam Narunga, you say that we should look at regional cooperation in a way of harmonizing this, but then you also told me something before we started that these, uh, these people where we import these, these vaccines from, we are mandated to only bring them, these, these, to bring the vaccines that are produced by the industries. Now, what if they are not of quality? Like we are on a low negotiation level because at the end of the day, we are the ones that need. So they will want to use their industries to bring in the, 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 the vaccines. You look at this play, it's like when I have a glass of water mm -hmm. and I know you need it, so I will give you the kind of glass of water that you need, not the quality that you might need. So the science there. Yeah, yeah I, I understand you, Rona. Hmm? Uh, in trade, because we are talking about, like I said, we are talking about a commodity which, is, which makes money globally. And also when you, you see the pharmaceutical industry, they are big pharma, big pharmaceuticals who are making money and it won't be easy. But, and that's why I'm talking about a regional, regional cooperation. Regional, look at the East African region from DRC, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, South Sudan, Kenya, 
we are, we are forced to contend with, and we can be able to come up with our own strong pharmaceutical industry. In trade, we talk about negotiations. You, you, you don't get what you, you want or you need because you are poor. You get what you negotiate. And trade is about negotiations, and we can be able to negotiate as long as we prioritize it. Because another issue which is important when we are, we are talking about uh, uh, manufacturing of pharmaceuticals and vaccines, it's the legal framework. Because today, uh, there are issues around patents, which are also very, make, makes it very difficult for us to produce our medicines and vaccines. And those issues need to be negotiated, not even here, but in Geneva. That's why when it comes to pharmaceutical and vaccine production, we are also looking at the Africa Union so that Africa can negotiate as Africa and say these are the rules we want, these are the regulations we want, these are the policies we want. So as we conclude this conversation, what more recommendations do you have for government as a big uh, tax body and a trade, you know, big, big, a big in your respective capacity? How, what more recommendations do you have for government to improve the health system of Uganda? Um, it, um, the recommendations which I have is for government, one, I emphasize the issue of prioritizing the people and the rights of the people, you know. That's the asset which this country has, its people. Then two, be able to prioritize the issue of manufacturing. We shouldn't be depending on others and we have learned a bitter lesson, you know, during COVID. So we need to build our own capacity. And government should be able to strengthen the regional and the continental cooperation. Today, we are talking about the continental free trade area. So government should be able to look at that issue of pharmaceutical production in that broader context of the Africa continental free trade area. Thank you. Speaking of the African continent of free trade area, remember you owe me a conversation in regards to yes. infrastructure. But of course, this conversation was derived from the World Health Day that is meant, you know, uh, running under the theme of health for all. Like she mentioned, government needs to prioritize people and especially the people that benefit from these local health centers. That's all we had from you, for you in this exclusive as we commemorate the World Health Day. Good evening. <laughs>